this is lecture 14 of physics 210A. thermal physics and today is going to be a problem solving session five based on the previous three lectures. Just a reminder that we had been working with the thermodynamic potentials, different kinds of thermodynamic potentials and the related Maxwell relations. So, we started with T d s equals d u minus p d v or plus p d v or this equation was written as du equals t ds minus pdv. And then we also had the enthalpy dh, which is t ds plus v dp. Then we had the Helmholtz free energy df equals minus s d t minus p d v and finally, the Gibbs free energy d g which was minus s d t plus v d p and the corresponding Maxwell relations are d t by d v at constant s is equal to d p by d s at constant v with a minus sign. This comes from the u equation. From the h equation, we get d t d p at constant s is equal to d v d s at constant p. Then from the f equation, we get d s d v at constant t is equal to d p d t at constant v. And finally, from the g equation, we get d s d p at constant t is equal to minus d v d t at constant p. And by solving problems, I had given you examples of employing those. We will be, we'll be using these relationships to solve certain problems. The idea is to give you some familiarity as to how uh, mathematical manipulations are done in thermodynamics. So, problem 1 is taken from Dittman Zemansky. Should write it fully. Dittman Zemansky's book, and it says that from the fact that dv over v, that is, I take the differential of v and divide by v, that is also 
an exact differential, so it is an exact differential derive the equation db dp at constant temperature is equal to minus d kappa dt at constant pressure, where beta is the coefficient of volume expansion and kappa is the compressibility. solution we have t ds equals du plus p dv but this equation cannot really be used here because all we are using is p t and v so, let me just make that remark since we are using P, T and V and we want to use the fact that dV over V is an exact differential, what we are going to do is put or take V as a function of P and T and write D V as partial derivative of V with respect to P at constant temperature D P plus partial derivative of V with respect to T at constant pressure dt. So, let me go to the next slide and write this whole thing again. So, we are taking V as a function of P and T and I am writing d V is equal to partial derivative of V with respect to P at constant temperature d P plus partial derivative of V with respect to T at constant pressure T T. Divide both sides by V to get D V over V, which I am saying is a perfect differential because what is this equal to? This is D of log V and this is equal to 1 over V D V D P at T D P plus 1 over V dv dt at constant pressure dt. Now, I know by definition that compressibility kappa is equal to minus 1 over v dv dp at constant temperature and beta the volume expansion coefficient is 1 over v dv dt at p and therefore, this differential d f is equal to minus kappa d p plus beta d t, which is nothing but d f d p at constant temperature d p plus d f d t at constant pressure d t. where now we can write that partial F with respect to partial P at constant temperature is equal to minus kappa and partial F with respect to T at constant pressure is equal to beta. 
Now, since df is an exact differential, I have d2f over d I'll take with respect to t at constant pressure and dp at constant temperature is equal to, if I switch the derivative direction and write this as dp at constant temperature, dt at constant pressure. And that immediately gives you that I have df by dp is minus kappa, so this is minus d kappa over dt at constant pressure is equal to d beta over dp at constant temperature. So, you have shown using these manipulations for the exact differential how these, the, the variation of compressibility with the temperature can be related to the variation of volume expansion coefficient with respect to the pressure at constant temperature. Problem 2. Derive the equation T d s is equal to C v partial of temperature with respect to pressure at constant volume T p plus C p partial T with respect to partial v at constant pressure dv. This is again taken from Tittman, Zemansky. Solution. Since I want to relate the quantities to Cv and Cp, it is best to write and start with d s equals take s as a function of v and p and write this as partial s with respect to partial p at constant v d p plus partial s with respect to partial v at constant pressure d v. Now, we are going to use Maxwell's relation we are going to take partial s with respect to partial p at constant volume v equal to minus d v d t at constant s. So, this is from d u. I have just reversed s and p in denominator and numerator using one of the mathematical relations we derived earlier. And the other relation I am going to use is that del s del p uh, v at constant p is going to be del p del t at constant s. And therefore, I get d s is equal to del s del p, which is nothing but minus d v d t at constant s d p plus del s del v at constant p, which is d p d t at constant s d v. And therefore, the equation we are after is T d s. I get T 
ds is equal to minus t dv dt at constant s dp plus t dp dt at constant s dv. Let me first ask you a question. What kind of process does constant S represent? Now, we want to convert this into the CP and CV. So, let us first start with the relationship of dV dt. So, that relationship tells you that dV dt at constant s times dt ds at constant v. And you can see that dt ds is inverse of ds dt. So, it is going to be related to CV because this is being done at constant v. And ds dv at constant t is equal to minus 1. So, I get dv dt at constant s is equal to minus ds dt at constant v times dv ds at constant Now, by definition, C v is T d s d t at constant v. And by Maxwell relation, we have d v over d s at constant t. is d t d p at constant v. And therefore, I get the first term as minus t d v d t at s is equal to C v d t d p v. Now, similarly, for the second term, I want to know now what dp dt at s is. So, I am use the mathematical relation dp dt s times dt ds p times ds dp at t is equal to 0. Oh, sorry, not 0, minus 1. Again, I am going to use Maxwell relation and the fact that C p is the t times the change in entropy with respect to temperature at constant p. So, what I am using right now is d p d t at s d t d s at p and d s d p at t is equal to minus 1. And this immediately gives you d p d t s is equal to minus c p over t d p d s t. And 
and dp dst is nothing but minus cp over t times minus dv over t or dp ds at uh, constant temperature is dv dt at p. That's dt dv. dt, let me write this again. This is minus dt dv at p. You put all this in, this gives you dp dt s is equal to cp over t dt dv p. And when you substitute this in the equation we had written earlier for t ds, you get C V D T D P at constant V D P plus C P D T D V at constant P. D V. And that's your answer. Problem number three. A gas obeys P V minus B equals R T, where B is a constant and its C V is also a constant, then we want to show that A U is a function of T only B gamma which is C P over C V is a constant and let me go to the next slide. And C for adiabatic process P V minus B raised to gamma is a constant. Solution. As we did for the ideal gas, we will calculate the dependence of internal energy on V. So, we have d u equals t d s minus p d v. So, partial u with respect to V at constant temperature is going to be T partial S partial V at constant temperature minus P and partial S partial V by Maxwell relation. So, we are using one of the Maxwell relation it comes out to be T partial P by partial T at constant volume minus P. Now, we are given that P V minus B is equal to R T. 
Now you can write this, this is, this is V's per mole, so you can also write this as P. V minus NB equals NRT. N is a constant, NB becomes a constant. So it doesn't really matter how I do it, but what you can show now is that dp dt at constant volume is equal to r over v minus b and therefore t dp dt at constant volume is rt over v minus b which is again p and this immediately gives you that partial u partial v at constant temperature is p minus p which is zero. So this implies u does not depend on t. Part b says that we want to show that gamma which is Cp over Cv is a constant. Now from the equation T ds equals du plus P dv, which is Cv dt plus P dv, I get Cp which is T partial S partial T at constant pressure is going to be equal to Cv plus P dv dt at constant pressure. And you calculate this from the equation of state and you get Cv plus R. Since Cv is a constant and so is R, this implies Cp over Cv plus R is equal to a constant. For the third part, show that during an adiabatic process, P V minus B raised to gamma is equal to constant, or you can also show it for some you know relationship between T and V. What you got to do is use T D S equals C V D T minus P D V, and for an adiabatic process, this is zero. So what you have is D V D T. I should write partial for an adiabatic process is equal to C V over P. C V is given to be a constant and this is C V over P is R T over V minus B. And you integrate this and you can get your answer. So I am not going to do any further on this. Problem four again taken from Whitman Zemansky says derive partial change of CP with respect to pressure at constant temperature is equal to minus T D2V by D T square at constant pressure. 
and for a gas obeying PV equals RT plus BP, where B is a function of T only show that Cp equals minus T D2 P over DT square P plus Cp0, where Cp0 is specific heat for low pressures P tending to 0. Solution C P is T D S by D T at constant pressure. This is also written as partial H partial T at constant pressure. Just to remind you, D H is equal to T D S plus V D P. Now, if I want to calculate how C P changes with pressure, I am going to write D C P over D P T is equal to D by D P at constant temperature D H by D T at P. Since D H is an exact differential, I can switch the order of differentiation and write this as D by D T at constant pressure and D H by D P at constant temperature. So, this gives me that partial C P partial P at constant temperature is nothing but D by D P of sorry this was D by D T at constant pressure of D H by D P at constant temperature. Now, let us write the equation that D H is T D S plus V D P. So, D H by D P at constant temperature is going to be T D S by D P at constant temperature plus volume. And now use Maxwell relation. write this as T D S D P at constant temperature is minus D V D T at constant pressure plus V. So, I get D H D P T equals minus T d V d T P plus V and that gives you d C P over d P at constant temperature which is equal to d by d T at constant pressure of d H d P at constant temperature as equal to 
When you differentiate, first d goes away. So you get minus dv dt at constant pressure minus t d2 v by dt square at constant pressure plus dv dt at constant pressure. These terms cancel and we get partial Cp, partial P at constant temperature is equal to minus T d2V by dt square at constant pressure. Now for the gas that obeys PV equals RT plus B which is a function of temperature. P, I want to calculate and show that C P is equal to minus T D 2 B D T square times P plus some P zero, C P 0 which is a constant. So, let us do that from the equation P V equals R T plus B T P and we are talking about per mole. So, small v is ok. I get v equals r t over p plus b t. So, partial v with respect to t at constant pressure is equal to r over p plus d v d t and the second derivative d 2 v over d t square at constant pressure is equal to first term gives me 0 d 2 v over d t square. And therefore, from the relationship that we had obtained, I get d c p by d p at constant temperature which was shown to be minus t d 2 v over d t square at constant p. For this particular gas I get minus t d 2 v over d t square and this immediately gives you that C p is going to be equal to minus t d 2 v over d t square times p plus some constant. And what is that constant? That is as p goes to 0, c p goes to this constant, which I will call c p 0. So, we can write that c p is equal to minus t d 2 b d t square p plus or p plus c p 0 and that is your answer. And finally, I am going to solve problem 5 again from Dittmann 0. Zimanski and it says obtain C V equals minus T D P D T V times D V D T S and d v d t s divided by d v d t p is equal to 1 over 1 minus gamma, where gamma is c p over c v. Notice that all these relationships are general. There is no assumption about equation of state or anything. 
So, for the solution, I know that C V is equal to T partial S partial T at constant volume. And using the mathematical relationship that partial S partial T at constant volume times partial T partial V at constant S times partial V partial S at constant T is equal to minus 1, we get d s d t at v equals minus partial v partial t at s and partial s partial v at t. And using Maxwell relation, now you realize how important these are. This becomes minus partial v partial t at s times partial p partial t at v. And therefore, this immediately gives that C v is equal to minus t d p d t at v d v d t at s. So, that part is solved. For the second part, I want to show that partial v partial t at constant entropy divided by partial v partial t at constant pressure is equal to 1 over 1 minus gamma. So, let us first see what partial v partial t is. Because I want to get the C v etcetera involved, I will start with the equation t d s equals C v d t by definition minus p d v. Now, if I am keeping s equals constant, that means C v d t is equal to p d v and this is s equal to constant. And this gives you d v d t at s constants equals C v over p. And therefore, the ratio d v d t s over d v d t p is nothing but C v over p d v d t p. Now, I want to calculate d v d t p. So, for that again I will go back to this equation t d s equals c v d t plus p d v and take derivative with respect to temperature on both sides keeping p constant which gives me t d s d v at constant pressure is equal to c v d t no i want d v d t so i should be actually taking derivative with respect to the temperature. So, I will write this as I want d v d t at constant pressure. So, I will write this as t d s d t at constant pressure is equal to C v plus p d v d t at constant pressure. Left hand side by definition is C p. So, C p equals C v plus p 
dv dt at p. So this gives me p dv dt equals cp minus cv. Uh, there was a mistake earlier here on the left side of the slide. TDS is plus sign here, and therefore there's a minus sign, and this is a minus sign, and here's a minus sign here. And therefore, dv dt at s over dv dt at p is equal to minus cv over cp minus cv, which gives you 1 over 1 minus gamma. Proved. With this, I conclude this lecture or problem solving session 5. By stating that some problems employing central thermodynamic equation and Maxwell relations have been solved. Thank you.